What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. I'm with Maine again. Thank you, Maine, for recording with me while I'm on vacation. No problem, brother. You know, I'm, I'm uh, always gonna hold down the brother Moxie. Partially because like when I first started out, you kind of held me down uh, compared to like everybody else, you know? So I'm gonna always be there for you, brother. <laughs> Thank you, I really appreciate it. But uh, you yeah, wanna really introduce what we're talking about today? Um, so, uh, not too long ago before the start of this recording, they actually released the use statistics for the Knoxville uh, Invitational, which are happening at the time of this recording. So not this Invitational, is the uh, most, uh, Knoxville Regional, yeah. So this is the most current up-to-date usage information for a major tournament in North America, at least. Yeah, so we're just going to like break down each Pokemon, give our thoughts on it, like why we think they're so high in usage and how they're being used. So it's going to be just a, a nice relaxed video, not, not too like in depth just like an overview of the current state of the metagame so let's just get into it you know uh let's let's start with fluttermane so what what does fluttermane do i guess it, it has a lot of sets right if we actually look at picolytics we can get a usage um usage stats for how it actually was run at uh here how it was run at like oceana, oceana which is the most recent we see that um, a lot of Fluttermane run Focus Sash right now. And while they used to run like booster energy in previous metagames, like the hypothetical metagame where we thought we were playing Series 1, but it was mm -hmm. probably actually Series 3, uh, it would run booster energy to outpace things. But the issue is, you know, the second most used Pokemon would also run Bundle. booster energy. <laughs> it's it, it just, one it point just... faster and it has Icy Wind. <laughs> yep. And, and apparently, I think what ends up happening is if your Fluttermane with a booster energy gets Icy Winded, you are then slower than non-boosted flutter mains. Yeah, um, it's 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 a weird math thing. So it really puts you behind the eight ball. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Uh, but because of that, focus sash became like the most dominant item. So like that's what you tend to see right now. Uh, it just makes it more consistent. Not focus band, but yo focus band. Ten percent chance to win. Yeah, <laughs> yo. Um, focus sash goes hard. Uh, other items that you tend to see in it, life orb. I'm personally a big fan of choice specs. Because Choice Specs with like Talonflame just does insane damage. And while it is a little bit risky, um, just the sheer damage output of like Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam is like really big. Terra Fairy Moonblast. It also allows you to run different coverage moves besides like Shadow Ball, which is your other main stab. I'm personally a big fan of Power Gem right now because what it lets you do is actually deal with opposing Arcanines, which, you know, spoiler alert, Arcanine is like what? Yep, one, right two, there. three, four, uh, six. sixth most used Pokemon in the metagame. Also Talonflame, it lets you one-shot those, so I like that as like a coverage move. But yeah, it's usually yeah. just like choice specs, fast, hyper offensive. It fits on so many team archetypes, dude. Like if we just look at like every team ever, um, or at least teams on this computer, like teams that I've just built, there's like a flutter yeah, main on a ton of them, man. And yeah, I don't everywhere. have too many teams because this is like my travel laptop. But you see, like it's so easy to slap it onto like every core. Yeah, there's no team that you can't fit Fluttermane on just because it's fast and it does damage, especially in the end game. Like end game, I've noticed for me, end game focus slash Fluttermane, where your opponent has to hit it two times with like mods that really can't take the damage. And I think that's another reason why Sash picked up. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, a lot of these mods, the uh, Paradox Pokemon, they tend to miss KOs, mm -hmm. um, but not, but not many things can stand up to two hits from Fluttermane, which is why Sash is really good. Yeah. Um, but like the the bundle, the, even the hands, uh, except for like Great Tusk, Great Tusk kills everything. But most of them they do miss some damage. So like Fluttermane does the most out of uh, out of most of the Paradox Pokemon, which is why it went from like third in usage, I would say, up until up to first, pretty much, because it was behind the bundle and the hands at one point. Yeah, and like most of the time, not most of the time, but like a lot of the time, you don't have to worry about doubling down on Ghost types. So you actually see it next to like Golden Go a decent amount. Uh, in that, because you're like Terra type away, like you're not too scared of having double ghost. Also with like Paris Trap being a thing, being able to switch on Paris Trap is really nice, not having like, having two Pokemon that can't get trapped. Um, and another thing that we tend to see it on is like Dondozo teams. Like you will see, let me get rid of this ad. How do I, how do I get rid of this? Annoying. There's usually, there's usually there an X or something. There yeah. <laughs> um, you'll tend to see it with like Dondozo and a big one that it's partnered with is Iron Moth. What they'll do, you'll oh, see the yeah. most used move is Acid Spray besides Protect, because that's like on everything. Um, acid Spray, and it's usually... Let me get rid of this ad. <laughs> <laughs> Not I mean, sponsored. I don't have ad blocker on this stupid... Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, you'll see... Why does it say Assault Vest? That's weird. It's usually uh, Booster Energy. Yeah, 89% yeah, so of the time. Outspeed, you can outspeed your partner for the main hit Acid Spray lower something special defense, and then you blow it up with uh, Fluttermane. Nothing at minus one takes a Moonblast that I can think of. Yeah, and it's just so good, dude. Like, 
It's it just you can also run like fake tears grimstone on stuff, but the acid spray flutter main or acid spray uh iron moth is really good for having two super offensive Pokemon on the field at the same time. And it does really good into Don Dozo too, because Don Dozo just gets like shredded, dude. Yeah, especially if you have like Terra Grass on your moth. Makes it really uh yeah. makes it harder to knock out. Yeah, and I mean, like, we, we've seen Fluttermane run, like, a decent number of sets. We talked about all these different things, but, like, it also can run a decent amount of filler moves for, like, the Focus Sash set. Uh, for example, let's throw a Sash on this guy. Right, see, so yeah, a Sash Trick Room was a thing for a little while. Yeah, and Sash Parish Song as well is, like, another thing that, like, we saw yeah. win the last tournament, or the last yeah, uh, regional. Win. <laughs> so, big thing for that, so, yeah. I, I think we can talk about Fluttermane all day, but you guys already know about it, so. Yeah. Let's move on to Bundle. Um... Some notable things about Bundle, Booster Energy Icy Wind, uh, as well as Focus Sash sets, like Focus Sash is also quite good. Uh, but a tech that we've actually seen pick up a little bit recently is Encore. Yeah. Now, so Encore's on, on really Encore. big, dude. Like, <laughs> cause, Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Yeah, because like uh, we mentioned that like Iron Bundle outspeeds basically everything at plus one with like Booster Energy if you want to run it, right? Uh, but also, if you just have, like, the Icy Wind Speed Drop, let's say that your opponent has, like, a Tailwind Pokemon. Like, let's say they have, like, Tailwind Roaring Moon. If they go for Tailwind, and you have, like, the Booster Energy, and you Icy Winded that turn, and your Iron Bundle survives, you can, like, shut it down with Encore, locking it into Tailwind. It's so fast, you can lock Pokemon into Protect. You can lock Pokemon yeah. into Trick Room. Like, there are so many options. Yeah. Dude, I think like, protect, is the, protect is the big one, because Protect is usually the safest play in all of Pokemon for the most part. And it makes it a risk because if you go for your protect in front of an encore mod and then the next turn you don't switch out it will encore you every single time it'll just be locked in and now you can't do anything with that pokemon so i i do think that's a really strong move in there i've seen some people actually go with like max hp for the bulk because then you live a lot of physical hits as well yeah uh, it gives you more ch gives you more chances to encore stuff or more chances to drop things speed as well yeah it's it's almost like a regioleki situation where regioleki was really frail but fast but this guy, it's like, because you would build it to be, you would build it to be like supportive, right? Um, this guy, I think he might start trending more towards bulk soon too, because it already has a really high defense stat, and it's kind of bad on the spit uh, side of things. And also, like, while it does pick up a lot of KOs with freeze dry, many of the Pokemon it KOs with freeze dry, it's already just a two hit KO, so you don't really have to invest too heavy into that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's known for its like support set, just the speed control, icy wind, encore stuff. Um, and yeah, and also Hydro Pump never lands. It sucks that that's its like best water move to the point where we yeah. saw one of the highest placing Icy or one of the highest places Iron Bundled um, at Orlando Regionals was actually Terra Ice instead of Terra Water just to power up Icy Winds because it would make it like a decently strong move dealing a decent amount of chip damage yeah, while also actually, speed dropping. Uh, there was a team that I used the rental of that got to rank one. Uh, I think Hirofumi built it and it was a, uh, it was a, it was an icy wind, freeze dry, encore protect, no hydro pump, terra ice, max HP kind of thing. Um, and it would just lock things down with encore every time because you couldn't KO it. And then it would just freeze dry them down with like terra ice. It was actually really strong. Um, I know hydro pump is sometimes necessary depending on the rest of your team uh, because you need that water damage into like fire types. But if you have something to hit that, it, you might be able to drop it. There's the, there's ways to run this Pokemon that are not the conventional uh, icy wind, freeze dry, hydro pump protect. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I might try to build like a really fat one soon, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, next up. Like a, a fat cover cloak one. Yeah. <laughs> next up is Iron Hands. I would say Iron Hands is hands down, no pun intended. Um, one of the best Pokemon we've had this format. Uh, and, you know, you can see it in the usage. It's at 30% of teams at this tournament. But it's it's because it has like a few numbers. It has a, it has a good number of sets it can run. It has like the Citrus Berry Swords Dance or Citrus Berry uh, Belly Drum set. It belly also has... Drum. Yeah, it also has, like, uh, Assault Vest with, like, Volt Switch, Fake Out, Drain Punch, um, and Thunder Punch. Or actually, uh, Wild Charge is typically better. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I mean, like that set a lot. It, it feels like the, the Incineroar of this format in that it's like a glue Pokemon, right? Like, you're like, oh, I want to patch my Trick Room matchup, I want Fake Out, I want Pivoting, let's throw on Iron Hands, you know? And it's also so fat, like, that 68 Spit F stat, bro, it doesn't matter, max that out. You don't need that much attack. You can just hit like 156 or 164 or like uh, adamant. And like now you're like out. Now you're just like getting like a ton of KOs on things. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because I've noticed with like Iron Hands, which is why, because it used to be at 50%, but now it's at 35 and like Fluttermane took its place as number one. And I do think it's because 
it wasn't really KOing things. It was just sticking around. So if it's not really KOing things at max attack anyway, you might as well get more bites at the apple by investing more in the bulk and then hitting things multiple times or pivoting out. Um, yeah, and yeah, I mean, like, cause like, like, like we said, though, like, if you're, like, not getting KOs, sometimes the trick is just, like, swap out swap out fake out volt switch for protect and swords dance and now you are KOing things yeah you know? at that point nothing 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 stands up in front of it once you get that because drain punch will keep it healthy and in wild charge at plus two there's nothing that takes it that doesn't resist it yeah and like there are, there's a good amount of terror types it can run too i've actually seen like terra ground but the more popular ones are terra fire or terra grass terra fire making you immune to burns and stuff just defensively it's a pretty decent typing too um, and Terra Grass making it so you can't get rage powdered by Amoongus and you just kind of beat Amoongus if you Swords Dance enough. So, yeah. Also gives you a, a, a more neutral matchup into Great Tusk so you don't get headlong rushed into another dimension. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Amoongus. You can't really hit it. <laughs> That's uh, number four on this list, which is not surprising, actually. Yeah, 32%. Uh, almost like the same as Iron Hands. But Amoongus does what Amoongus does. We've seen a lot of Terra types for it. Dark, Water. I'm personally a big fan of Water. Um, as far as like Oceana results, though, if we look at Amoongus, uh, what, what's the Terra type we saw on it? It was usually Terra Water, yeah, because it it matches really well into like Arcanine and stuff. Uh, so it's just like a really nice support Pokemon. We see Leaf Storm occasionally, but like these are like the four moves you see: Protect, Palm Puff, Rage Powder, Spore. The amount of value this guy brings to a team is just absurd. Like Pollen Puff is not only like a decent chip damage move, but it also heals your opponent like a heal pulse, fifty percent. Like that's stupid, bro. Yeah, and before the uh, before the comment section jumps on you, he does mean heal the partner, not the opponent. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> like, sorry, the the partner. They, they, partner. Like, they, they you know they like to jump on you when you. They would have. They would have. Thank you for saving me, dude. <laughs> Thank you for saving me. But yeah, I don't know what they were thinking with Pollen Puff when they invented it, right? Giving it the ability to do damage and heal, um, especially into a format where like a lot of things like the Terra Dark, or like there's stuff like um, well, Miascarada is not around anymore, but like it does. 100% to Miyazakarada because it's four times effective. It's yeah. probably why people are going for this over, uh, what's the other one? Brute Bonnet? Because Brute Bonnet also takes quadruple damage to Pollen Puff. We have seen some Pollen Puff um, Brute Bonnet. I think Ashton Cox ran it. I think he did. Um, also, speaking of like tournament people, uh, Gavin, I think he was running Terra Steel in Rain with this Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, which was actually really, it seemed to be really strong because he was able to resist most hits. Um, he was already, and then with the fire weakness he picked up, he just he was using rain and palafin, so it didn't really matter. So it was actually really strong in that way as well. Yeah, it's very that's... specific, but it was strong. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, Amoongus does what Amoongus does. I feel like we don't need to explain it too much. It's got regenerator, it switches in and out. It's like a high value Pokemon that fits on a ton of teams. It's anti trick room, it's pro trick room, it does everything. The items it can run, Citrus Berry is good for like just having longevity. Uh, you can also run like Rocky Helmet if you want to get rid of. Um, you know, physical attackers a little bit more. But I think Covert Cloak is one of the best items on it because while Garganical has fallen off a little bit, it still exists, and you can literally patch an entire Garganical matchup by just rage powdering away the hit with Covert Cloak. Um, and also just not being able to be flinched on lead and just sporing things is huge, you know? Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. They can't fake you out. They can't rock slide flinch you. Um, you really wreck the Covert Cloak. And especially because you can't put the Garganical to sleep, it does give you a better matchup into it in any kind of like 1v1-ish situation or like 2v1. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's Amoongus. It is it is what it is. Great Tusk. This, this is, is the man. Boy. This is my boy. People were sleeping on Great Tusk at the beginning, and it wasn't definitely wasn't top five at in tournament usage. But people know that this thing is headlong rush is just so strong. Yeah, it does one thing, and it does it really good. You put a focus sash on this dude, and all of a sudden you can win three v one situations. Yeah, and I also wasn't like a fan of Earthquake because some people were running like Earthquake close combat, but people, but Earthquake and Headlong Rush, I think is okay. I think yeah. it's okay to run both. Because like you're already, yeah, because you have like the option to like bypass wide guard and stuff, uh, but also just like in situations where the opponents are both chipped, Terra Ground Earthquake is really yeah. strong. Just, just for yeah. reference, it's adaptability. So here's the math for it, right? Your stab goes to two times, so it's a 200 base power move, and it's reduced by 75%, so it's 150. Each one of those Pokemon is getting hit by a 150 base power move. Yeah, and every, if it's at 50% or lower health, it's going down. If it's at 60%, it might go down. <laughs> yeah. Also, Terra Ground Headlong Rush, what is that? That's 120 times two. That's 240 base power. Yeah, it's actually it's actually insane. Nothing, like Arcanine, I don't, I don't know what kind, depending on the, the spread, I'm pretty sure Headlong Rush can still KO an Arcanine after an Intimidate. 
Uh, yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, I think it can, depending on the, 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 the spreads. And if you have a life orb, you definitely KO. Yeah, something that I've seen is actually life orb, and they actually drop protect for substitute because it makes you intimidate immune. And also, it just wins games. Like, <laughs> like the counterplay yeah. goes out the window. Yeah, if you, if, you get, if you get the thing up behind a sub, oh my gosh. Yeah, and I they actually don't made have like a special attacker, it's over. Yeah, I made a whole video about Great Tusk and why it's so great. If you want to watch that, it's it's a few videos back. It's just talking about like the Talonflame Great Tusk combo and why it dominated at Orlando and why it's still doing good, as you can see by the usage stats here. Talonflame, Great Tusk. Uh, we'll get to Talonflame in a second, but let's move on to Arcanine. It doesn't need too much explaining. It's Arcanine. It's it's our budget Incineroar. He runs Will-O-Wisp. He runs like extreme speed for like coverage. Snarl. You got Flare Blitz and Snarl. He's he's the Swiss Army Knife. He's another glue Pokemon. You know? Yeah, because it doesn't get o code by many things, so it'll get a Will-O-Wisp off, it'll get a Snarl off, it'll ruin something's day, and then it'll go down after. But it also does pretty decent damage with um with Flare Blitz. Those are actually pretty strong Flare Blitzes. Yeah, and something we have seen occasionally is like Assault Vest sets that will like put like close combat on it and like drop their drop yep. their like Will-O-Wisp and put something else. Like we have like Flare Blitz, Extreme Speed, Close Combat. You could put Snarl on there, but I've actually even seen a couple like really weird sets running like uh bulldoze for speed control <laughs> yeah it, it is a versatile pokemon i do think some other sets will start to pick up especially because like the assault vest lets you take like hydro pumps and stuff from like the uh bundle and then yeah. you could like essentially terra snarl it survive another one like there are there are ways to take those negative matchups that it does have and actually you know make them more positive ones especially because flare blitz ko's stuff like um like flutter Bane, which would probably take you out with two shadow balls normally so it's a it's a very strong utility pokemon right now yeah you, and, and offensively and and ironically it's been trending towards being like a much more offensive pokemon like we see a lot of just max attack um like uh arcanine running around now you know uh, i believe that wolfie ran max attack to win orlando yep. so yeah yeah and and honestly like also just terra dark is such a good terra type for it because it seriously patches up the indeedy armorer's lead you just terra dark in front of them and span snarl yeah, Terra Dark is great. Um, Terra Water is always great because you keep your Steel Resist, but then you also um, resist water, so mm -hmm. you're not taking that. Um, Terra Grass uh, is something that I've seen a little bit of because then you resist ground, but like Terra Water and Terra Dark are probably the most common ones. Yeah. It used to be Terra Normal for those extreme speeds, but I think people started using it as more of a defensive Terra, which I think is a, a good call. Because 100%. Yeah, like it's, it's Dragonite does that call. job so much better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you don't need it. You don't need it from the Arcanine. And we'd be here all day talking about it. Like in the same way that we'd be here all day talking about Fluttermane and what it can do for a team, we'll we'll be here all day talking about what sets Arcanine can run. It can run safety goggles, it can run covert cloak, it can run Biggie Berry, it can honestly you could make a case for heavy booty dudes. Um I said what I said, but yeah, heavy booty dudes. Uh let, let's talk about Golden Go. May, did I break Go, you? Um, did I break you with no, the heavy booty dudes? <laughs> No, 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 I'm here. Um, the Golden Go is an interesting one, right? Because it tends to go up and down, up and down a bit um, in its usage. But now it's like back in the top 10. Actually, what is that? One, two, three, four, top seven, uh, which is which is a really nice spot for it because it is a really strong Pokemon. Yeah, especially since it's people, competing for a ghost type slot. Yeah, but I think people realize that like bulky Goldango that can take a hit and then fire back with Make It Rain has been really, really good. Especially into opposing like um into opposing Fluttermane and uh Iron Bundle leads because I think I'm pretty sure it blows both of them up and it can tear it defensively to survive a hit. Yeah, so and it's it's, it's really so dangerous. easy to like make a fat spread too. Like you can literally just like do this. Give yeah, it like a cover cloak. And then boom. Make I think it right rain, now it's very shadow. common. Also, people are running like leftovers protect. Yeah, on it, protects also a good item. I like covert cloak for like snarl stuff, but also just like yeah. leftovers makes you like fat. Something else that we've seen that's like demonic is weakness policy plus mouse hold. Oh my gosh, that is actually insane. It is gross, <laughs> and like Terra Water is like really good on it too. Like, I, I get why they made this Pokemon after money because it's so wasteful on its resources. Where it's like it just oh weakness policy, I'll take the minus two to, to destroy everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so wasteful. Yeah. And like, it's so it, strong. And it can run so many like items like life orb, scarf. I've seen focus ash once and it broke me. I hated that. I wanted to like, Oh, that's, that's nasty. Cause you headlong rush it. And then 
you get blasted in return because of survival to focus sash. That's yeah. actually terrible. It's so that's bad. The only like, and it gets recovered too. If you want to run like a really fat set with recover leftovers, you could. It um, does get recover. You just it shouldn't does get recover. Yeah, you just shouldn't. This is, is the issue. This is why like it's really helpful for meta games to develop because at the beginning it was just always choice space golden go, choice scarf gold to go, nothing else. Four yeah. attacks. And then like people started doing the nasty plot stuff and then the leftovers came in um so people started you know doing the recover stuff like this different this pokemon is actually way more versatile than just spamming rake it rain but if you want to just spam make it rain that works too yeah speaking of hyper offense stuff down flame what's the one item it runs <laughs> covert cloak Covert cloak i've seen sharp beak and i've lost to sharp beak but yeah yeah, no. yeah sharp beak sharp beak is actually probably even more common because people have terra ghost on their uh on their thing yeah let's actually see hold on yeah, Covert Cloak with Sharp Beak at like 16%. Sharp Beak yeah. is basically just meant to make your Brave Birds hit harder. But what you do is you go Terra Ghost plus Sharp Beak, or you go like Terra Grass plus um, Covert Cloak. It's one or the other. Um, but yeah, no, there's like one set for this dude, and yeah. it's this. Max Bulk, so you can actually survive a hit. <laughs> Max Speed, so you can take advantage. Get your Tailwind off and then take advantage of your Tailwind. Yeah, Tailwind, Will O Wisp. You play Taunt Speed Ties like every single game, uh, and then Brave Bird. Honestly, yeah, this is like one of the best Pokemon in the metagame right now. The only way it'd be even more broken is if you could have like a nice flying move that didn't hit you for recoil so you could keep Gale Wings. Yeah, yeah that would actually be awesome. Or if they let Gale Wings just remain how it used to be where it was always priority regardless of health. I I, I don't know. I kind of like it how it is, low key. Um, I mean, so right, yeah, right, uh, right now it's in a good space because it's because Talonflame did fall off for like what five years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's in a good spot now again, which is it makes me happy because Talonflame is a good Pokemon. Um, but the Nerf Gale Wings really took it out of contention. But like now, we're because there's so many Pokemon that it does well into. Um, like opposing Great Tusk, it does well into. Um, opposing Fluttermane, it does pretty well into. Uh, even um, even like bundles, like if you can get your tail when I get a brave bird off, like you get enough chip that it something else can pick it up. Um, it, it does good into Iron Hands because you can then will o wisp it. Uh, it does good into a Moogus because you can brave bird it, you can taunt it. So like it, all the common stuff on the screen, except for like the 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 four Pokemon after it, pretty much, it gives you uh, some kind of positive uh, matchup into as yeah some, in some kind of way. And it's just like a, it's it's not like a glue Pokemon. It like is the the defining thing of its archetype. It it is like the face of hyper offense. Ironically enough, like yeah. it feels like it is the the big enabler of like these scary Pokemon, uh, like Great Tusk, like Buttermane, like Golden Go. Even like it's so good, man. Like I I just love that a utility Pokemon like Talonflame can exist in such a like strong meta game. Like look at these stats, man. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not really insanely high at all. But it's, it's funny, right? Like, why training is important because it, have you ever actually looked at like Amoongus' stats? Yeah, it's like it's it it's not that <laughs> fat actually. It's just that the way yeah. that you train it like makes it fat. Yeah, the way you train it is really important because Amoongus' stats are not popping off. If anything, you could argue that these stats look more impressive because of like the speed and stuff. Uh, like, I don't know. Amoongus has a higher attack stat that it never actually uses. <laughs> yeah, Amoongus has a higher attack stat than Talonflame. Just just food for which thought. Is, which is which is weird. Yeah, but um. But yeah, like, so you see, like, the stats aren't eye-popping, but Gale Wings, Tailwind, a uh, priority, potential priority Brave Bird. Yeah, Will-O-Wisp um, to, like, burn everything. Yeah, it's just really, really, really clutch. Uh, yeah. Terra Flying Brave Birds with Sharp Beak actually do a ton of damage as well. Yeah. Speaking of Terra Flying. Transitions, baby. Yeah, dude. All right, so <laughs> Roaring Moon. I always thought Roaring Moon was actually Roaring Mid. Like, I don't like it. Um, yeah. But it, yeah, it's been sorry. picking up, right? You, you tend to see it as, like, on ladder at the very least it's like a tailwind setter and they'll speed boost to make tailwind easier to get off but a set that's been picking up dragon dance yeah dragon dance is necessary it's funny because like when i when we, when these first got announced i thought dragon dance because i even made like a video with like how to use Roy moon you guys can check that out um i thought dragon dance would be the default because i thought it would need that because it was slower than all the um, other paradox so you need a defensive terror you get a dragon dance up and then just blow them up um, but people were not using Dragon Dance to start, but now people have seen the light that you need that speed boost. You need that attack boost, more importantly, because you're missing so many KOs with normal Roaring Moon that you need that plus one. Multiple. Yeah. And honestly, if, like having Throat Chop as like its main stab is also kind of cool. Um, like just it's a strong move. It's 80 base power, but it does so much. Block Sylveon Hyper Voice, uh, block Parish Song, 
uh, it block, I don't know, like anything else that uses a sound base move, Snarls, like that's big. It's it's like, it manages to be a support mon, but also like a super offensive mon. And having like Dragon Dance as its main way of making sure that like offensive potential is like, it keeps going is like really nice. Because the, the thing is like, we were mostly running Tailwind at the beginning of the format, right? And it would Tailwind and it would get intimidated or it would get burned. And then it's like, oh, my Roaring Moon's useless now because I got the attack boost with the booster energy, but now it's burned and I have a way to get rid of it. So I'm just done. Roaring Moon's done. So now that Dragon Dance is picking up over Tailwind, it makes it so that like you get like the life or boost from the booster energy. You Terra Flying, you have Acrobatics, or you can play really, really aggressively and just Dragon Dance on them. And now you're in business, dude. Like if they don't have Intimidate spam, it's it's like it's it's done. But if they do have intimidate spam, it doesn't really matter because you're still keeping neutral with a life orb. Yeah, because the, the, that dragon that was important because its special defense is actually really nice. So it stands up pretty well as long as you uh, Terra defensively into opposing Fluttermane and bundles. So you actually can get a turn to set up in front of those if you defensively Terra. Yeah, to become faster than them, and then you have this crazy damage output that would probably Oko. It almost flood main regardless, but then you could probably take out a, a bundle as well. Yeah. Uh let's move on to another dragon type. Dragonite's my boy. Dragonite uh, is uh, really cool. Yeah. Um it's it's got two amazing abilities uh in a focus and multi skill. Both of them are phenomenal. Uh one blocks the intimidate and the fake outs, and the other one basically stops you from taking that much damage on turn one. Mm -hmm. So people can like run this thing also as a dragon dance setup Pokemon or a tailwinder. Um, if you decide to because you can block the uh you can block the what you call it the inter the fake outs um assault vest is a very common item on it because people are like going fake out terra flying terra blast so you can take hits like you have multi well take hits with the multi-scale on turn one and just blow something up in return extreme speed if you miss the ko because then you're faster and pick it up on the next turn it's a it's a really really versatile pokemon right now it's also another pokemon that fell off for a long time but now has found its way back into like common vgc practice yeah, and it also is just like a bunch of different sets. Like you, we've talked about, like the Terra Flying Assault Vest Terra Blast set that's been doing really good. That's not supposed to be Ice Ball. That's supposed to be Ice Spinner. Yeah, I was like Ice Ball. <laughs> yeah, Ice, ice spinner. spinner. So Ice Spinner is really cool because it gets rid of like terrains and stuff. Mostly just for Psychic Terrain, you can like Ice Spinner on the Psychic Terrain Mon, live everything because of Multi Scale, and then switch in like a Fake Out Pokemon the next turn and put a lot of pressure. So that's really cool. Uh, but the other set that it runs, you know, the Terra Normal set, uh, this one either runs Multi Scale to make sure it doesn't drop to like you know, anything when it doesn't Terra, or it can run just like inner focus plus like choice band. Like that's also quite good. It's never going to be bad, honestly. Uh, but yeah, like those are things. Also, Lumberry plus Tailwind is something that we've been experimenting with over like Terra Blast. And it's been like really nice for just supporting the rest of the team. So Dragonite is like a jack of all trades. And it's so interesting that like with Terra unlocked, with Terra being like an option for it, it all of a sudden became a top tier threat. Yeah, because that four times weakness to ice and then that weakness to fairy was really like just holding it back because especially because it couldn't hit anything back for that much damage. Um, and it didn't have any like good uh flying type stab. Um, so now with Terra, you can either make sure you have good flying type stab with Terra Blast, or you can make extreme speed your good normal type stab, which does so much damage that you can actually hit stuff while because it always is able to soak up hits. Now you can eat hits and dish it back out, which makes it a way better Pokemon yeah. than it used to be. And it's super fat. Nothing one shots this dude, especially if you have multi scale. Nothing. Yeah, and even if you don't have multi scale, like I'm pretty sure you can even this thing to like live Moonblast, like which is a super effective game yeah. from like Flutter Main. Um, it's just like I said, the the four times ice weakness is annoying with like bundle, but you can just tear out of it now. Yeah, you know another Terra flying Pokemon though, like uh, Tyranitar, becoming like Terra flying type is really big for it, and that's like a reason game it's been so good. Because yeah, like the the standard set for it is like Rock Slide, Terra Blast, Assurance, and like a filler move. Like you can put whatever Low you kick. want here. Yeah, Low Kick's pretty common. Yeah, too. Low Kick's really good for like matching up into King Gambits. But basically, what it does is Tyranitar can either be on its own or pair with Lycanroc. Rock. It's like its own good solo Pokemon. It matches up into basically any team and does something for it if you're gonna go into like a rain matchup you're like a sand setter so you'll be able to switch in on a water move and just eat it because you're assault vest and you have that special defense boost uh versus like a moongus a pokemon that would usually absolutely annihilate it you just tear a flying and get rid of it into great tusk you turn it into like an automatic loss matchup in a 1v1 to yep, a automatic you, yeah into like you can't touch it you know because you tear a flying terror blast 
And it is just like a really strong attacker. Like, you don't need a lot of speed. You can hit like enough speed that you, you know, outspeed things under like Tailwind or whatever. Or you can just like be satisfied with with yep. a little bit of speed and just assurance everything after like dazzling gleam into it. Like it's it's such a good Pokemon that does just about everything. And we've seen it go on a ton of teams. We've seen it on like the Lycan Rock and Tyranitar, Don Dozo, Hyper Offense stuff. We've seen it just on balance teams. Um, it's it's like a Pokemon that I didn't think would be good this gen, but it just it consistently surprises me. And it really broke out once again at Orlando. I think Orlando was the tournament that we saw like what the metagame was going to turn into. Yeah, because I think people just realize like the the only thing that really stops um your Tyranitar for the most part is like a really strong fighting move and you know some physical ground attacks because nothing on the special side really one shots it um because of the sand as it is so throwing the assault vest and making terror flying so now it's two big biggest weaknesses of ground and fighting it, it's immune to one and resist the other um and then with even though you lose your sand boost you have the assault vest so you don't actually lose anything yeah so and it, nothing, and, and, nothing it, is really taking it out yeah and it just sort of beats iron bundle too like it doesn't matter if you terra or not you just or beat not, iron yeah. bundle you're too just fat on it. the special defense side to not beat iron yeah. bundle rock slide just takes it out every single time yeah and honestly the biggest thing sash breaker just automatically yeah. break sashes that's huge all sashes is multi-scale breaker sash breaker everything all right last pokemon halifin obviously hero mode this dude's basically just a legendary pokemon it's so good it's like one of the strongest pokemon they've ever made it's so i understand why zero to hero was like a thing a little bit even though it's weird with pokemon because they choose what they want to be completely broken and what they want to have balanced something like this is something that they wanted to balance where you had to take a turn setting it up every time by switching it out but yeah. then they gave it jet punch terra water jet punch mixed with water and rain is basically like hyper beam <laughs> you're blowing up everything that you touch no matter what yeah and this isn't all yeah, and there's like a lot of different ways you could run this guy. You can make him really fat because he's fat um, and live everything with like leftovers and like jet punch as your main stab because you don't really care about speed. Uh, you can revenge KO things with Terra Water jet punch. In the rain, Terra Water jet punch will just one shot a lot of Pokemon. And you could just run it like fast too. Like it can outpace Golden Go, it can outpace Arcanine, it can outpace. Great Tusk, like Great Tusk has a really rough time versus it, which is why it kind of has to run Focus Sash to make sure you can beat it because it can just jet punch you. Um, but then if you make it fat, it takes those hits back from Great Tusk and jet punches it again. Yeah, and and I think the biggest thing is it is a Pokemon that you can run to beat Don Dozo that isn't just there for Don Dozo. Like it's so rare to see these things without haze because it patches that matchup automatically. Yeah, because there's nothing that Don Dozo can do to take it out in one shot. And it has to be like haze. plus three with like Terra Dragon yeah. order up to possibly one shot a Palafin. Yeah, with like no bulk investment on the Palafin. <laughs> like it needs yeah. to, it needs like a crazy niche situation. Which, like we said, to... it's really easy just to get bulk on on Palafin. Like you can, it's so hard not to get bulk on it. Like it's fat. Yeah. Ga so Gavin, um, because they really he released the pace. He he went max HP, max attack, nothing else. Yeah. No speed at all. There's like not and really a point like, for speed. And just was like jet punching everything in rain. Terra water jet punch. Just surviving hits and just getting off as many jet punches as he could. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's it's just a really good Pokemon. I think the only reason that I prefer speed on it is because it's really helpful um into I don't know. Like it's it's really helpful like into the Dondozo matchup to not have to take that initial hit at plus two if you have Tailwind up with like partner Pelipper. Um it makes it so you can just yeah. fast haze and not have to eat like a ton of damage that one turn. Um, yeah, I also like being faster than Great Tusk and um, being Great Tusk and Golden Go because then you could potentially like wave crash both of them, especially if they try to like, especially if like the um, Great Tusk tries to tear into something else. Yeah, it's also really hard for Golden Go to take rain boosted Terra Water wave crash. Like, yeah, it, it just doesn't. Actually, like <laughs> doesn't. nothing does. Nothing that doesn't just, resist it does. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't. If you get, and even if you do resist it, because I've seen some Terra Grass Pokemon still go down to Terra Water rain boosted wave crash. It's actually really terrifying how strong this pokemon is yeah it's just a pokemon that matches up into a, matches a ball into a lot of things i would say it's actually probably the best water type that we have and if we just look at usage stats yeah it's the best water type yeah. <laughs> which is yeah. funny because it yeah. has to be this weak little baby form which can still do work um because like yeah. i've run this i've run this right jet terra water jet punch in the rain even off a of base 70 attack is a devastating move because it's the same base power as Scizor's Bullet Punch because of the Technician Boost, right? So this is 60 yeah. base power. 
versus Iron Moth teams, you can really break their ankles with this one. If you just lead off with Palafin, they're like, haha, the Palafin cannot KO, and then you just j tear a water yeah. jet punch and KO it. It's 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 stronger than like non-boosted Dragonite Extreme Speed. Yeah, it's a crazy because Pokemon, get, bro. Because you get stabbed on this, even in baby form. Like yeah, so, you know, Palafin, probably the go to this generation, in my opinion. But yeah, um, that's probably going to be it. Like, we just covered the usage of like the high use Pokemon at this tournament. Uh, we'll probably see this going forward. I'll do another video talking about the results of this tournament. So this will probably come out. Uh, we'll drop this one on Sunday. This will come out tomorrow. So, yeah. Uh, any last things you want to say, Main? Uh, nope. Uh, hopefully you guys are, you know, watching some games, learning something. Uh, if you guys are going to be in Charlotte, I will be there. Are you going to be there too, Maxi? Uh, yeah, I'm going to Charlotte. Yeah, so, you know, Maxi's the famous one. So you guys say hi to him. I'll be in the background somewhere. But if you want to say hi to me too, that works. Yeah, dude, I, honestly, yeah, I'm excited to finally meet Maine. I've actually never met him in person, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this standpoint in time, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, make sure you sub to Maine, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Peace.